Professor Benjamin Wang, RGC and panel members, Vice Presidents of the Universities, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the RGC Forum. I'm Sisi, the Master of Ceremonies today. In the past three days, the subject panels just finished the, the assessments of proposal under General Research Fund and Early Career Scheme. Today, we are very pleased to have Professor Benjamin Wa to host the forum, and the five subject panel chairmen or their representatives to share with us the observations and comments from the panels. After the experience sharing session, there will be a question and answer session. May I now invite Professor Benjamin Wa, RGC Chairman, to give us opening remarks. Professor Wa, please. I'm very glad to see so many of you turn out today because uh, it was a heavy rain outside. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it is really my pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to this forum. The forum was first held last year in response to a recommendation made in phase one of the RTC review. The RTC acknowledged the need to promote two-way communication with the research community, and the forum was established in the first step, as a first step towards wider engagement. In a minute, my colleague from the five GRF on the ECS subject panels will share with you their observations in the proposal assessment process in this year's exercise. This year, we have received a record breaking of over 3,400 applications competing for GRF, ECS, and HSS PFS. This is actually about 75% of all the academics in Hong Kong applying for one of these grants. From Monday to Wednesday this week, subject panels met to consider the proposals and the RGC would meet on Saturday to consider the funding recommendations. The funding results will be announced by the end of this month. I hope you would all take this opportunity to exchange views with our panel chairs and members. I'm sure you would benefit from this exchange and you would get to understand more of our work. I would like to thank you for all, uh, all for coming to, the, to, to this forum today, in particular the five panel chairs and members who have been working so hard in the past three days assessing the GRF, ECS and HSS PFS proposals. I would also like to thank HKBU for providing this excellent venue for staging the event and the staff in providing logistical assistance. I will stop here and hand over to the panel chairs and members. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Wa. May I now invite Professor Ping Yi Law to share the observations of the biology and medicine panel. Professor Law, please. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm actually standing here on behalf of our uh, permanent chair, Jigan, here. He has some. Um, some fine last minute that uh, issues that he cannot come. So I just was uh, thrust on this job. But my job is make it easy because I have a, a panel of very outstanding uh, reviewers, both from the uh, domestic and I think we have, uh, let me see, about over 20 um, uh, reviewers from outside of Hong Kong to come back and do the review. Um, for the GRF, we have received over 640 uh, applications, and EC, ECS, I believe, is over close to 60 applications that um, we receive. Uh, I think for the GRF, I think close to 400 of those have received a score of a preliminary score of four or better. So as you can see that, unless the RGC give the M panel more money, we could not fund all 400 of those grants that's outstanding, four or better. So we have to make a pretty difficult choice to fund only fund or try to fund as many as we could of the 177 that, uh, million dollars that was 
uh, appropriate to this part of the uh, grant. Um, we, we did, um, I think, two days of reviewing of the, of the GRF, and the criteria that we basically use is that one of the thing is that we base on our the um, the the review from uh, for the external reviews that come in from the external reviewers, and our own um, internal reviewers. We have two readers that go over the grants, and they we make the comment during the meeting. They both uh, provided their comments to the panels and the panels, and they recommend the score to the panels. The way that we're working is that how we judge the merits of the grants is basically on the significance of the subjects, the feasibility of whether the PI can do the work, how well they make the case of whether he can do the work, and of course, how good are their preliminary data. And sometimes that, even though the subjects are very, very important, just because that the feasibility, the question was not being answered, we could not provide a good score to those grants. So basically, even though it's a highly significant project from a really outstanding investigator, because the feasibility was not really established, we cannot provide that. So from, from that kind of criteria, we came up to be, I think, we're able to identify 167 or so grants that we say that meet our criteria. And so um, that's how we do it. And then for the ECS, because it's an early scheme, uh, we take into consideration that the PIs are just started, so the preliminary data is not as, uh, as, as many or as much. So, but then uh, we're trying to encourage the young investigator, and so that's, uh, that's how we do it. So basically, the similar kind of uh, uh, criteria was uh, being put for the ECS, significance, uh, visibility, and the record of PI. So from that, I think we were able to identify um, I believe something, I don't remember the exact number because I don't have it in front of me. But a majority about, uh, we identified some really outstanding grants that we were able to recommend funding. So, and that's all that we've done for the two, uh, two and a half days, three days of work. And I think that we had, uh, I think all of the panel member, I speak on behalf of the panel members, that we all have a, uh, uh, a good time I wouldn't say good time, but we enjoy ourselves reading and, uh, and discussing among ourselves all the grants that present to us. I would say that the, the, I have to say that at least for myself, from the six years I've been on the panel, the standards of research from Hong Kong, the medical panel, has really increased. This is really, I think this is not just because I'm standing here. I'm saying that in, is that Hong Kong research has improved tremendously. I think it's all to the hard work of the people that are sitting, sitting in front of me. I thank you for your attention and thank you. Thank you, Professor Law. Please be seated. May I now invite Professor Raymond Ken, Chairman of the Business Studies Panel, to the stage, please. Good afternoon. Uh, Thank you for being here. The, my name is Raymond Ken. I represent the business panel. Uh, the panel members, although we only met for two days, uh, we actually have worked very hard for the last couple of months. Uh, we often hear complaints that uh, the whole process is not very transparent as to why certain proposal is funded and why certain proposal is not funded. So I would like to take a few minutes to explain how we arrive at these decisions. After you submitted your proposal, uh, we will assign a first reader, typically very knowledgeable about the subject matter, and then also a second reader to each proposal. 
the first reader is going to nominate some external reviewers for each proposal, typically six. Uh, of course, not always we get six external reviews, but at the minimum, we will need at least two external reviews. Uh, after we receive those external reviews, then the first reader will read those reviews, and then he will read it himself as well, and also judge the budget, whether it is excessive or whether it can be justified, uh, and then come to a score. At the same time, the second reader will also read that proposal very carefully and make a suggestions, uh, recommend a particular score for that. Then in the panel meeting, the first reader will present uh, each case, and the second re reader will follow. And the whole panel together will judge each and every single panel, so each and every single case. And as the, as the panel chair, I will also take a look at the budget. So that's how the decision is arrived. Uh, it's a very long process. I would like to thank my panel members who have worked very hard in the last couple of months to bring this to a conclusion. Now for this year, we had 213 applications in the business panel for the GLF and then 43 applications for the earlier career scheme. Uh, my general impression is that the quality of the overall quality of all the applications have improved over the previous years. Uh, I sometimes think to myself, and I said, I'm lucky that I'm not competing with <laughs> these academics, the academics from Hong Kong, because many of those proposals are so well written, so thoughtful, that I would have no chance if I were to submit a GLF myself. So that's, uh, that's of course, besides the point. Uh, there are a number of points that I want to note, uh, which hopefully could allow some of you, if you apply for GLF or ECS in the, for, in the future, to improve your chance of success. The first one is that you should pay attention to the policy guideline, which is available on the U, uh, LGC website. Uh, very often, we see people not following that guideline, for example, using the wrong font size, uh, exceeding the page limit. And I also would like you, after you finish writing your proposal, get someone else to read it or wait a, another day, read it again. Because sometimes if I see typos or grammatical errors in those uh, proposals. Uh, you give me, a, give me a, a bad first impression. Of course, it has very little to do with substance, but at the margin, it could make a difference. The second point that I want to make is about resubmission. Now, it is a very competitive process, so not everyone will get funded every year. And sometimes we will give you comments, and you may want to resubmit that proposal again in the future. But when you resubmit your proposal, you shouldn't just change a few nice. You should take those comments from the previous external reviewers or from the first reader and second reader seriously and in the write up to address those concerns. Because very often those proposals will be assigned to the same first reader and he will feel offended if you don't take those comments seriously. So this is one thing that you could do if you do a resubmission that you could do to improve the chance of success. And the first thing that I want to mention is that when we judge a project, when we judge a proposal, uh, you ask for typically quite a bit of money and we need to assess whether that project is feasible or not. And very often we would like you to at least do some preliminary analysis especially for empirical exercise to do some preliminary analysis to suggest to show us that this is indeed feasible instead of just giving you the money and let you want it for two years and tell me that it doesn't work out. Now at the same time, you should, if you have written something before, you have ongoing research that is related to the proposal, you should make a declaration. And in particular, if you have written a paper subsequent to the submission, you should give us an update 
Uh, otherwise, that would also be a, that would be a violation of the UGC policy of what we call non-declaration. Uh, so this is something that you should bear in mind when you uh, do that. But I would always encourage uh, the, the researchers, when you submit a proposal, try to do a pilot study, try to do some preliminary analysis to make sure that project is a feasible project so that we can feel safe by giving you that money. Uh, that's about all I want to say for today. I think later on I will have the opportunity to answer whatever question that you may have. So I'll talk to you a little later. Thank you, Professor Ken, for your sharing. Please be seated. May I now invite Professor John Lontin to share the observations of the engineering panel. Thank you and good afternoon. I have the pleasure of sitting in for Professor J.S. Chen, who's the chairman for our panel. There are actually two engineering panels, of which I serve on one. Um, and we received our panel about 400 proposals. So if you double that, it's about 700 or 800. It's a large number. Um, I want to share with you some observations that we made from our recent session. And uh, you'll find that some of these have been echoed, for example, from Professor Khan and others. Um, so hopefully this will underscore the importance of some of these issues as you prepare your future proposals. The, uh, the first one, again, that uh, we noticed is that um, some of the applicants don't follow the guidelines. So there are very specific requirements in terms of length, number of words, font size, and so on. And for those of you new to the proposal business, um, there is an unwritten rule that you absolutely follow the guidelines, period. It's an expectation. And thus, if you deviate from that, it immediately gets noticed in a bad light. Um, so this is just a cultural thing that, that is worldwide, actually. The same thing happens in the United States. You follow the guidelines, period. Uh, so please make note of that. The second item, and this is a positive one, is that the panel noticed this year that the overall quality of the early career scheme proposals was noticeably better than it was uh, in the past. And this suggests that the quality of young researchers in Hong Kong, as well as their mentoring and university preparation, at least under the engineering panel, has been improving. So we were very happy to see that. The third item has to do with the budget. So this year, we had some proposals, actually a fair number of them, asking for as much as 1.2 million Hong Kong. And we had one as high as 3 million Hong Kong. Um, and what I'd like to point out is that the average award in the engineering panel is only $620,000. The highest award we made is $970,000. Now the problem is, if you overgrasp in terms of the budget, uh, first of all, it, it looks bad. Uh, in fact, it would suggest that you might want to go after a higher uh, format or a different category of proposal. But also, in addition, if you are awarded the proposal, you're going to have to completely redo your scope of work to fit within the funds that have been allocated to you, which is more work and it may disrupt the vision uh, and the, the overall um, aspect of the proposal that you want. So uh, there are, I believe, guidelines available from previous award amounts, and the suggestion is to stay at least somewhat comfortably within those confines. Uh, the fourth item to uh, mention is that um, some of the applications did not mention their previous work and projects. And again, my understanding is that this is a requirement that needs to be done. And then a related issue is that uh, on occasion we have had the issue come up about whether this proposal currently being reviewed is uh, a small variation of previous work that's been done. And even if that's not the case, once that impression has been made, again, you're already on in a negative light. So the suggestion is made, if you have a current idea that you're presenting, be very clear, just in a sentence or two, about how this is unique and distinct from prior work. Obviously, we all have our areas of expertise, and we will have similarity in our work, but distinguishing what is unique now from what you've done in the past will avoid these kinds of issues. The fifth and final thing to mention is that both the panel and the reviewers, the external reviewers that Professor Khan mentioned, do notice when a proposal is well written. Some of you will see this in your comments. It's noticed in a positive light. And this means, by the way, not only being well written in terms of English and usage, but also more generally in terms of organization, clarity, 
and being able to get your thoughts and ideas across cohesively. Um, this is a very profound and powerful impact. And again, if you can do this, if you can achieve it, it uh, will put your proposal in a positive light. So again, as Professor Khan suggested, if you can, have someone else review it, or your mentor or someone, to try to make the English and the writing and the impact itself as strong as possible. And then the, the second uh, added element to that comment is that uh, the reviewers, we try to be as close as we can to your particular expertise, but we aren't necessarily experts in the exact thing that you're doing. So providing a little background and education and context will help, put the, will help the reviewers uh, find the general area and the importance of your work. So um, rather than jumping right in, if you can provide an introduction, so to speak, uh, that will be received in a favorable light. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lantin. Please be seated. We would now invite Professor Paul Kra, sub panel chairman of the Humanities and Social Science panel, to the stage. Professor Kra, please. Kia ora koutou katoa. Good afternoon. Um, I'm from New Zealand. Uh, <coughs> Help yourselves in preparing your application. Help the panel to help you. Use the abstract as a window into the whole proposal. Write it carefully and completely so that from the abstract, uh, the first reader who has to identify up to eight or nine or 10 external reviewers to be invited to comment on your work, from that abstract, the first reader can tell what your project is not. Like, if you're not using a particular approach that is usual in your particular field, say that up front, somewhere in your abstract, so that you don't get a, an external reviewer who seems to take that approach and is complaining about you not doing so. So the abstract is really important to shape carefully and completely to guide the whole process from the very beginning when a first reader has to assign or invite external reviewers. Now, I heard several remarks this afternoon here at, at BU and have over the years heard remarks from often disgruntled applicants about how external reviewers have misunderstood or three of the four external reviewers thought my project was wonderful, but one hated it. <laughs> um, yes, and? Well, the assumption seems to be because one hated it, this was shot down by the panel. This is a nonsense. The panelists are reasonably intelligent people, generally, and um, <laughs> want to be fair and reasonable to all applications. So the panelists are fully capable of discounting these weird outlier kinds of um, reports that may be very different from the main thrust of the external reviewers. So trust the panelists to do a good job. But the panelists are generalists or not necessarily in your particular field. So as was said just now, make sure that your application is readable to an intelligent reader who is a non-specialist because it's the, panelist, the panelists who are ultimately making the recommendation on whether your proposal goes ahead or not. And then we, we've decided, working down from scores five through a pile of papers, uh, when we've decided that yes, this should be approved, our main task seems to be to hack away at the budget, or certainly in humanities and social sciences, we try to spread the wealth as much as possible and reduce your budgets. So in the budget section of your application, make sure that things are clear, that you have justified why an RA should be employed for 36 months to conduct a literature research and do some photocopying and transcribing a few interviews. Persuade us that this RA is an important part of the project and is essential. Persuade us that they need to be there for X number of months. Be clear, be reasonable. Um, and our 
I think that's about it, except another point, resubmissions. It's already been mentioned this afternoon. Take resubmissions seriously, and once again, help the panel to help you by showing that you've carefully considered previous year's uh, uh, comments on your application and have taken aboard, on board those suggestions and how you've taken it and incorporated these new ideas in this resubmission. If you do that, a panelist tends to be rather uh, indulgent towards resubmissions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Clark. Please be seated. May I now invite Professor Wesley Cantwell to share the observations of the Physical Sciences Panel, please. Good afternoon, and uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's nice to, to visit uh, Hong Kong uh, Baptist University. I've only seen it from the outside, so it's nice to be uh, see it from the, the inside today. So, uh, yeah, I uh, chaired the P panel. I, in fact, replaced Bill Milne, who should have done it, but is unfortunately uh, he's unwell. So uh, I stepped in to replace him. <coughs> we had one and a half days of a very busy work. Um, I won't give specific details, but we saw a lot of proposals, a, a, a great number of proposals. Um, I have to say, very high quality proposals, um, very impressed. The majority of them are very well written. Uh, obviously, uh, English is my first language, and it's not for, for many of you, but these were really well written proposals uh, that were clear, and uh, I was very uh, impressed by that. Also, reiterating what a, uh, uh, one of my other colleagues said, the improvement in the early career proposals uh, was evident as well. So. It was, uh, it was very encouraging to see that. And the panel is, is really supportive of early career uh, academics. And there's really a, a sort of a, a generosity of spirit on, on the panel to try and support those uh, people uh, as much as possible. So the panel, uh, the, sorry, the proposals were good quality, well written in, uh, in general, and, and well structured. There was a broad range of topics uh, in, in my uh, panel and uh, very interesting topical areas. Um, one of the issues that came up and was sort of asked to make a comment uh, on impact, and impact is, has greater meaning perhaps in, in the UK where I come from, where there's a huge emphasis on what is the impact of your work or the likely impact of it. And we're uh, generally expected to make a comment on impact. It might help in the writing of a proposal uh, to, 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 to highlight what the, the local impact of your research could or, or should be to sort of facilitate this in, uh, in the minds of those on the panel. And this was mentioned specifically yesterday by, uh, by a colleague. Uh, budget expectations we've, uh, was another topic I was going to mention. My uh, colleague has just mentioned it before me, so I won't go into any detail. But do be sensible about it. Don't, don't overload. Don't, uh, don't expect uh, too much. Don't uh, overload the, the finances because uh, you have to make your objectives reasonable. You have to deliver the research at the end of the day. And sort of the negative side of the whole thing, we have to deal with some final reports that are judged unsatisfactory. And often it's because the, 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 the researchers have not satisfied the objectives of the, the original objectives of the proposal. Now, whether that's because money has been cut or, or whatever, uh, that's another issue. But it's important that you're able to really satisfy and fulfill those objectives. Otherwise, two or three years down the line, you could face yourself in the difficult situation where your proposal in the next round has a black mark against it and there are sort of penalties associated with that. So steer clear of, of that danger zone. Make sure your objectives are sensible, deliverable, and don't over oversell yourself in that regard. Uh, we've heard the issue about not to failing to mention previous projects. Please make sure you do that. I've seen comments about people having forgotten that they've been on 
uh, a large number of proposals. It's sort of slipped the mind. Uh, it certainly doesn't slip my mind when I'm <laughs> uh, involved in, in proposals because money is often hard to get. But linked to that, I think it's important if you have co-investigators on your proposals, make sure that they're participating. They're not just there to add sort of strength and weight to your proposal. Make sure that they're for there for a reason. And some of these co-investigators sort of get themselves in difficulty by not being aware that they're on these grants uh, until sometime down the road. Am I really involved in that, all of those grants? I had no idea. It was a sort of a comment I, I saw. Um, Sometimes, although I said the quality is generally good, there are comments back from reviewers that the quality is not so good or poor and the grammatical things, but I think you see that wherever you uh, are across the world. Um, so I would also say don't uh, try to sort of shoehorn your proposal uh, into an area that's perhaps fashionable. Uh, you know, we've seen in recent days where people include you know, AI and other fashionable things in their proposals. There's a few lines about it, even though the proposal has got nothing to do <laughs> with this particular area. But they think if they throw in these few exciting words, it'll somehow uh, push it up a little bit more. So uh, one or two of my colleagues were slightly irritated by, by that. Uh, one thing that uh, irritated me a little bit um, and this is rather specific, but I'll mention it now, because uh, it involved me having to go to over 40 reviewers, which is my record, having to try and get, uh, I went to 40 reviewers to get a handful of reviews, and it was because the keywords were so obscure, and there were acronyms all over the place in the keywords. Even when I put the acronyms into Google, Google couldn't handle them, so... <laughs> Me going out and looking for reviewers in these really obscure, what seemed obscure because of these acronyms, really posed a problem. And uh, I had occasionally have great difficulty in getting reviewers. And when you have difficulty getting reviewers, you can often get reviewers then from the sort of the wrong area, but who are just willing to help out and do it for the wrong reasons, maybe. So make sure your keywords are appropriate and, and useful. Uh, and the abstract was mentioned uh, as well, and I was going to comment on that, but uh, we've heard that from Professor Clark, so I won't mention that. And also make sure that the title is, uh, is sort of uh, uh, digestible. It's not a title that runs over I don't know how many lines. Make sure it can be easily understood. And um, so, in general, the feeling, I think, from the panel, the panel is very supportive, and it tries its best to try and fund projects. It's not out there to shoot down pr proposals. It's there really to support. And I think if I could wind the clock back and have my career all over again, uh, I'd come to Hong Kong because the success rates here are a lot healthier than those that I have seen in <laughs> places where I've worked before. I'm extremely envious, but maybe it's just a reflection of the high quality of research that takes place in Hong Kong. Thank you very much.